We've got a new model Coronet for 1967. It's the RT. The 1967 Dodge Coronet RT has a lot going for it. We're big fans of the styling. It's certainly not a small car, although Dodge marketed it as a midsize back then. The overall feel is light, and the sculpted body lines add length, but the reverse taper on the rear roof pillars make the car seem, well, less massive. The RT badges are prominently displayed on the quarter panels, right behind the two reliefs that break up the quarters, and the grille features a tight pattern of chrome vertical slats and an RT badge, and a cool louvered hood scoop is placed right in the middle of the long hood. Out back, more chrome vertical slats decorate the rear aspect, and another aggressive RT badge is mounted slightly to the right side of the taillight panel. Dodge was lagging behind in the high-performance streetcar sales, and the 1967 Coronet RT was intended to attract speed-crazed buyers away from the 400 cube GTOs and the SS396 Chevelles. The problem was that the base Coronet was deemed to be too much like a regular passenger car, and the 426 Hemi version was far too much of a race car for the street. Magazines complained that the styling was a little mundane and the hood scoops just looked too phony. Racers bought the 426 cars because the street Hemi was ready to rock at the drag strip, but it didn't have the everyday street manners of the competitors' cars, and the 426 Hemi's price tag could boost the bottom line over 800 bucks, and that's more than 5,000 of today's dollars. It's ironic that the low production was considered a bad thing back then, but it's exactly what makes these Hemi cars so valuable today. RT was a new package available on the 67 Coronet, and it had a bunch of performance and appearance goodies designed for road or track. Uh, Dodge actually called this car the hottest thing since the cast iron stove. And while it normally came with a 440, ours rumbles with the optional 426 Hemi, a 425 horsepower breathing in through dual four barrels and breathing out of free-flowing dual exhaust. A four-speed manual was standard, or you could spring for the three-speed automatic as seen in this car, and a heavy-duty rear axle took the abuse up back. These cars had an additional rear leaf spring on the passenger side to aid in traction and to reduce wheel hop, although the red streak tires didn't have much of a chance up against the big torque of the Hemi. Heavy-duty shocks and a front sway bar helped the car stick to the R part of its name for road, and the three-inch wide drum brakes, or optional discs, help haul it down at the end of the T, or the track portion. And Superstock Magazine actually said that these provided the best performance per dollar over any other car they tested. And today it still runs hard, it just takes a few more dollars. Open the door and the bucket seats and a full-length console greet the driver, and the wide dash displays an array of rectangular-shaped gauges and controls. The optional tachometer is mounted low on the front part of the console, making it a little hard to see when the needle goes reaching for the red, but perhaps the scream of the Hemi and the billowing tire smoke serve as upshift indicators. Dodge advertised the RT as a drag racer from the beginning. One of the more interesting ads calls the car the Big Boar Hunter and features a bright red 440 hardtop and informs readers that this is a car for drag racing fans. More interesting is that it's driven by a pretty young blonde girl who's also seen shooting us with finger guns in the lower corner of the ad. Most women in 1960s car ads were shown driving base level economy cars or as passengers, but Dodge acknowledged the women's movement and put this feisty chick behind the wheel of a 440 cube street racer, and you can easily imagine her tearing up the streets. The RTs responded to all the typical performance mods of the day, 
And Hot Rod Magazine took a 426 automatic 1966 model from the mid 15s in the quarter mile down to the low 13s by changing the rear gears, adding headers, swapping a distributor, removing the resistor from the coil wire, changing spark plugs, adjusting the valves, jetting the carb, and adding cheater slicks. And although that might seem like a long list of modifications, these are things that weekend warrior racers did uh, the first weekend they got the car home. Dodge only sold 162 1967 Hemi Coronet RTs with the automatic transmission. They sold 121 that were four speeds. Which one would you choose? Automatic, or do you like to shift your own gears? Let us know on our Facebook page, and if you subscribe to our YouTube channel, you won't miss any episodes of Muscle Car of the Week. See you next time.